today. Yeah, uh, coming today, I would have thought EG would be Easy looking like they. Yeah, I thought EG would kind of roll through today. Like their opening match was against Cloud9, who I thought EG would be favourites against, but Cloud9 took that one. So we're here in the kind of middle of day one, still early, early days when every team's playing 15 best of ones. So you can't really pick uh, heavy favourites to go through or heavy favourites to get knocked out beyond one or two teams, but. Right now, both these teams in contention at least to not be knocked out in the first, uh, the first end of the first stage uh, in the bottom six. So we'll get into the draft and we'll see what the the plan's going to be from the two teams here. A lot of teams have been just straight up first banning Enigma versus EG every single time, just because Zai plays a ridiculously good one, and it's even more potent when Evil Genius is on Dire side. Yeah, uh, I guess the problem is, well, it's more potent on the Dire side, but you also have to ban the Lycan against a Dire side EG. Uh, they will run the Lycan, uh, not really like a, a like a big set of theirs, but that's because it's normally banned mm -hmm. out. So, uh, Brewmaster gets banned out instead. Uh, you can always take Doom though. We've seen a lot of teams take Doom. Even Skyrath is decent against them if you have a yeah. really good Skyrath player. Has really been the pick of the tournament. Um, yes, I haven't got. Yes. To, I'm sure we, there's been a lot of talk from other casters and analysts. But what's what's your thoughts on this hero and why it's become so popular here in TI4? He got buffed in the recent patch. He's really really fast, which you can't really underrate. Most of the end supports are actually like 285, 295, and if you're lucky, they're 300 plus. Um, and even the really good ones are 315, but he sits at 325. So he has really good zoning um, potential. His spells are relatively long range, not his Ancient Seal, which is probably his strongest spell, but he has a ton of burst. And if you have heroes that can lock a hero in place for even two seconds, faces with Chronosphere, four seconds level one, and you have like Clockwork with Cogs is pretty good. Even the Hookshot stun is usually good enough to guarantee a kill with that ultimate. So now that teams have figured out how to coordinate his ultimate with Five heroes that are very very popular at this time and month in Dota. I think that he's just he's just amazing, and he scales decently. And BKBs are less prominent than they were before, so yeah. that's also another reason. Yeah, I think teams have realized his ultimate's basically like a finger of death if you combine it with a, a stun of some kind. It doesn't even have to be like Fnatic in their opening game ran a Chaos Knight Skyrath Mage, and it's like, well. In theory, like you think Skyrath Mage Ultimate, you need to set up by like a Clockwork or a Void, but hey, even a CK two, three seconds any, stun any is two enough. Seconds, yeah. Too. yeah. So, I will see EG go for an Enigma Tide, all about the team fight to at least some extent with their their opening two picks. And this is an opening I feel like I've seen quite a lot from Evil Geniuses. Uh, it's normally Zion the Enigma Tide can be run. I would say in two ways. Sometimes EG give it to Universe in the offlane, and they also do run a farming Tide for Mason as well, depending on what the the game calls for. Yeah, I think usually they give it to Universe though because they, it, with these two particular heroes, they need damage to dump into these ultimates, and that's usually where Mason comes in. Yeah, the Storm Spirit, one of his um, more often played heroes, is still in the pool. Weaver's still in the pool, so depending how big of a hard both of those are give pretty him. bad versus Faceless Void and Skyrath, yeah. though. Generally, you want something a little bit tankier. That doesn't. Now, Weaver especially bad against Skyrath Mage. I mean, you're against the Skyrath Mage as well. Weaver and Storm both get kind of. Uh, at least hot, somewhat countered by the, the Ancient Seal uh, to a large extent. Yeah, you want heroes that are naturally tanky, don't have to rely on active abilities. Yep. Uh, Wraith King still in the pool, although that's actually saying EG prefer to run as a support. They had one game today where they did do the Wraith King Enigma as a support duo, so we'll see what they maybe have in mind here. The other hero I've seen RTZ do quite a bit of, I was just about to say, is the Razor. But Fnatic, they don't ban it out, they take it for themselves and... I'd say Razor is actually like number two most popular hero that people wouldn't expect. I mean, he was like picked a decent amount, but not to this extent. Primarily. I knew the Chinese teams loved this hero and we were going to picking him a ton coming into TI, but I wasn't expecting him to be as popular with like EG, Fnatic, and all these other West End teams, which have been really lifting him up into the pick status. I think he really gained a lot of popularity because Doom was really popular. He's like not a great target of Doom at all. You get Static Link off, you use your Plasma Field, you use Ida Storm. If you do Doom, he can still move around really, really fast. He can still sap damage, he can still do a ton of damage, and he's naturally very tanky with that strength buff in the last patch. What these next couple of picks for EG are going to be? Still haven't got their Arteezy mid hero most likely. Uh, still need another support and probably a, a carry of some kind for Mason. EG are looking to lane dominate. Looking at their support bans, they banned out the yep. Veno and the Lich. These are very good babysitters for Faceless Void. So it looks like they want to target Faceless Void in the early game. Do you think Fnatic are more likely to be running the Void in the uh, offlane or as an actual farming carry hero? I think as a farming hero, uh, but at the same time, Fnatic has been switching things up a lot. I've seen them a lot with Excalibur and they had a very particular playstyle then and now that flies back in the roster, who knows? We've only had three game sample size. Okay. 
All right, yeah, that's the other thing that's been really impressive with Fnatic, like managing to just change their carry player twice within a couple of months. First it was Era, then they went to Excalibur. Now just right before TI, they're playing once again with Era and doing amazingly well here. Um, so we'll yeah. see if they can continue that here against Evil Genius. The thing is, they still have a Meepo and a Tinker player, both of which yeah. Excalibur is really known for. Hani plays a very nice Tinker, and No Tail plays, or Big Daddy now, plays a very potent Meepo. It does force Ten them to kind of switch up their roles if they want to do the Excalibur style greedy Meepo play, which is something No Tail does in pub games, remaining. but we haven't seen him ever kind of pull that out in professional Dota, at least not for uh, a long, long time. So, Necrophos, a hero not yet picked in this tournament. Make it Nathan picks it a lot. I used to actually play against him in NEL a lot. I would say the two heroes that he likes the most right. are Weaver, um, Weaver and Bloodseeker, outside of Priests of the Moon, but Priests of the Moon was more, more for competitive, not for the in-house leagues, and Necrophos was actually a hero that he advocated for a lot. So cool. I know they've actually used this hero a fair amount. Yeah, and Ten you can silence remaining. him with the Ancient Seal, but he's unlikely to be a target when you've got Enigma tied on your team. They're more likely Five to be silenced up, remaining. so he can get off a lot of heals in the fight. His ultimate, just in general, helps bring he's down tanky top. core heroes, which is exactly what Razor is going to be in this game. So, just kind of acts as really a thorn in Fnatic's side as far as what else they can even pick as well. I don't know, I'm actually sure. I, I think he he does have his pros, but he also has a lot of cons, and he doesn't have any mobility against yeah. Faceless Void, Skyrath, and Razor. They don't have any good lockdown for Faceless Void. They don't even have that much damage to actually get Razor down to Reaper Scythe range, and they have a lot of slows and things that he needs to run away from. He needs to run away from Static Link, Conk Shot makes it difficult, Faceless Void with a slow, and then Chronosphere, of course, and those are only the three heroes coming out, so Necrophos needs to have a significant amount of farm to compensate for his lack of mobility. Yeah, and I feel I mean, you mentioned that they don't have much damage to help Reaper Scythe people. That's where probably Arteezy's hero is going to come in. They're going to need some kind of mid hero that has significant damage output and burst damage at that just to help bring down targets who you want to try and Reaper Scythe right off the bat there. So Yeah, uh, like a Tinker would have been really good yeah, for him, but it's been, it's been taken up, out. Um, Huck and Quop is still there. I think Quop especially can offer quite a bit of damage. But they, they haven't gone to that for Arteezy no. for a very long time. That was like Arteezy 1.0. 2.0 is like the farmer um, the farmer carries. But a lot of teams have been picking up Puck. It's been very popular, as has Queen of Pain. So yeah. I don't think it'd be too surprising. If when Arteezy first started playing with EG and becoming kind of known in the pro scene, it was a lot often on the Puck. That was definitely one of his heroes, although he did transition to that farm-oriented play. But if you want farm and you want some damage output, you could still run the Morphling. Like, the Arteezy solo mid Morphling is... Mm -hmm. Not the worst here. Skyrath Mage with the Silence is a potential way of actually killing off a Morphling, but if you get enough farm, if you get a Lincoln Sphere up, you can use that Lincoln Sphere to help keep yourself alive. At the same time, I don't think they want to aim that late game oriented oh. because looking at their lineup, it takes a lot of it takes a lot of farm for them to overpower uh, Fnatic's lineup if they have even farm. So I think that they need you know, to uh, lean towards more early game, shut down Faceless Void, and they need to get BKBs eventually, but they have the late game ultimates. Enigma, Black Hole, and Tidehunter Ravage are going to be good the entire game. This is a spicy pick, the Abaddon. This is good against the Skyrath Silence. You Very always good. have that shield to negate it. Reserve time. I mean, that's one of the main reasons you're picking this, and also just because whoever is, you're gonna, when you initiate in with a Void Skyrath or Clockwork plus Skyrath, you're, a lot of focus fire is going on one target. So if you can keep them alive with a shield and a death coil, Hey, stuff could go well. It, the, the, I don't know who they're going to try and make Superman, though, because Necrophos, it's nice to keep him alive, but he can't take control of the fight on his own uh, with just an Abaddon behind his back. Yeah. So I'm curious. Maybe Arteezy's hero, like you get some kind of a maybe a more squishy but Five high damage output remaining. mid hero that needs some protection from an Abaddon. Maybe Ember? I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. Ember doesn't sure. have enough. They banned the OD. OD would have been nice. That's, I, I like I like that ban, even though obviously not the best matchup mid against a Razor, but it's mm. still a OD would have been pretty good. A good RTC hero that fits this draft. I think they do want some physical damage up as well. Like I look at EG's draft. Sure, they've got plenty of heals. They haven't actually got much pushing power there. Even though they've got this strong five man, it's like the actual damage output onto towers and raw Necrophos damage is and lacking. Enigma. Yeah, that's decent enough. Uh, the Radiant doesn't have that much AOE. That's yeah, they, they can't clear as much at the same time. Field maybe, but. Going back for the Clockwork, mm. Cl uh, Trixie paid an amazing five Clockwork earlier in the day, so most likely it'd be Trixie Clock, Fly, I Void, and Honey, Razor. Reserve Honestly, I feel time. this is just where you go for an Arteezy, Shadowfiend even. Shadowfiend? I think Shadowfiend's gonna get destroyed, actually. But just by the... I mean, the, by, I mean, by Ra Razor laning right. stage isn't good, so... Dragonite it is. Okay, okay. Dragonite. push. Dragonite's tanky. Mm. Looks like a five-man death ball. 
Yeah. <laughs> how, yes. do you, how do you fight into Ravage Black Hole with a bunch of Necrophos heals and Abaddon heals? This is this is a really tough lineup to engage to. You've got a Chronosphere, but like you're setting up maybe a Skyrath Mage ultimate, but if you don't actually kill anyone with that, or you only kill one target with that, it may not be enough. I'm easy just looking to snowball off the back of Enigma. I say they they play the same strategy but with different heroes, but overall it's very, very similar to what they have been running. Whereas Fnatic, just looking to get big on Faceless Void, just kill people with Faceless Void and Skyrath Mage Ultimate. Ten the best seconds, part about their ultimates seconds, is that they're really low cooldown. You said Skyrath Mage is old as like Finger of Death, five five and seconds, it's on what, like a 60 second cooldown? Faceless Void is actually very low cooldown for how strong of a spell it is. Alrighty, well we'll hop ourselves into the game, hand it over to our wonderful, wonderful, beautiful, dedicated observer, Scriff, and uh, get things going here. Uh, looking forward to see EG vs Fnatic here at TI4 in the group stage, and uh, we'll uh, get things underway here with uh, our it's two teams. Big Daddy Clock, not a Trixie Ooh. Clock. Okay. So it's a support clockwork perhaps coming it, out from... It could the be, a, yeah, I think roaming probably with yeah. Fly. All right, well, we'll keep our eye on EG, who are going to be going through to protect their own jungle here. They may be running into Fnatic. We'll introduce our two teams here. We will be seeing on the die side, EG going to have Zai on the Enigma, sent towards to start things off. Arteezy going to be handling the Dragon Knight. We've got the Tidehunter in the hands of Universe. And uh, on the Necrophos will be Mason. And then finally, on the Abaddon will be PPD, I believe. The Abaddon as uh, focused in here in the mid lane. And uh, on the Fnatic side, the Radiant team, we have got Fly playing the Skyrath Mage. We've got uh, Hani playing the Razor. Over on the Faceless Void, we are going to see Era. And then uh, at the top lane, we're going to have the Mirana being played by dot 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 Trixie. And then finally, it's going to be Big Daddy on the Clockwork. Getting used to this dedicated observing. This is uh, this going to be fun now. Who's looking at the drafts and everything going down here? Uh, do you favor either of the two teams? Mm, I would say EGs. I think their death ball is probably stronger than Fnatic um, compensated for in their draft. They, yep. as I said, it's a lot of single target. Mirana with like Starfall, maybe, and like Plasma Field. But aside from that, they have a lot of single target, and uh, Abaddon is really, really good at preventing single target bursts. But at the same time, the damage output from Fnatic is really, really high. Um, but I think EG can suffer like a couple casualties in team fights and still get towers early. So Fnatic, they really have to prevent EG from getting like three or four towers in like 12, 13 minutes. If that happens for EG, I think they're they're good on well on their way to victory. All right. Well, for Fnatic, they are going for some dual lanes here. They put Big Daddy and Trixie up in the top lane. Uh, Clockwork Morana, knowing that Enigma is going to be in the jungle, just allows them to uh, kind of run dual lanes in both top and bottom and hope that they can win as many of these lanes as possible. Void's actually going to be middle lane against Dragonite, and I kind of like the Void mid. Void has a huge base damage. He's just one of those heroes that can actually, in theory, do quite well here against a Dragonite mid. Dragonite will still get his farm, can still get his fast bottle and use Breathe Fire to get CS, but beyond that, I... Void can do more than okay against a DK. Yeah, at the same time, he has very poor rune control. Uh, that's the only thing, and he is actually very difficult to kill. How are they going to kill him? If he has, like, one point in uh, backtrack, I think, like, Dragon Tail... Um, plus even two supports rotating, Enigma plus Abaddon, aren't going to kill him until Enigma gets level 6. Yep. Alright, well, uh, we'll see what the plan's going to be here. If it, I hope we look towards any rotations towards that. Like, ganking a face's void is the other thing. Like, he's actually got an actual escape spell, though. So you send Enigma mid, he can time walk up in between Malifus procs. There's, uh, not a whole lot of lockdown to actually kill him off beyond the Dragon Tail, which won't be enough without at least three heroes coming towards mid lane. Uh, the final lane, towards the bottom lane, we are going to have uh, the offlane Tidehunter of Universe up against Fly, uh, as well as the Razor here. And this is an interesting one here. We do see Fly having his neutral camp, one of his neutral camps blocked off, kind of limiting his ability uh, to do too much there. And uh, he is, I mean, he's got the single pull, but that's really all he's got. Meanwhile, mid lane, Zai's actually caught out here, gets trapped in a cogs here. Error time walks in, and Zai gonna cop an arrow with that. This is first blood. Fnatic pick it up. Error strikes first on the solar mid faceless void. Not the player you're gonna be giving that first blood to, and. Fnatic come out firing here in the, uh, well, 
game one of a best of one, so. Yeah, support clock is actually pretty legit too. 315 base move speed. It's not, I, I wouldn't say it's easy uh, to catch people up with cogs, but you have to face this void slow. You have the conch shot level one from Skywrath Mage, and looks like they may actually go for a kill attempt on Universe yeah. very shortly. Mm -hmm. Universe is going to be a bit careful here. Can this dual lane actually kill a Tidehunter? He's got two points in Kraken Shell. Do you think it's possible? Yes, I think so. All right, well, it's a TP. <laughs> that's, that's a no. Well, it, it, it's a yes if they, it doesn't TP out. I think with the, the damage seal, you can crack and shell, but you're only blocking X amount of damage. Well, in this case, 20 damage per right click. And when Hanny's hitting for 100 plus damage, he's going to kill you. Looks like Mason has gone for early Ring of Basilius, trying to put pressure on this tower. Trixie has one of his own to try and keep his creeps alive, and Necrophos has actually skilled one point in hard stuff pretty early, too. You generally don't see it that often, although it has been buffed recently, but percentage-wise, it just doesn't deal with that much damage. 0.6% per second. Yep. Well, uh, looking back towards mid lane, DK is actually ahead on the CS. Uh, has 21 CS to the 11 in the Faceless Void. I feel... I feel like a deep, a Void should be doing a little bit better with this. He's got 70 base damage right now and uh, is still quite far behind the Dragonite on CS. Even though you do get spammed down by the Dragonite have to farm under your tower, normally a Void I thought I think would be do better than this. Yeah, he should be doing slightly better, but at the same time we haven't actually seen Era mid that often. Sometimes I guess yeah. he is partnered with a Wisp, but a one on one matchup, I don't think I've ever seen Era in a one on one matchup in mid. He does have the first blood, so as far as actual farm goes, he's pretty much on par with RTZ because of that first blood gold. Top lane, we will see uh, an illusion rune picked up by Zai in the top river. That's where he gave up first blood last time. Going for that rune did not really work out too well for him, and he did take a spill. This time he'll get it safely, make sure uh, that he does secure that one. So I have very mixed feelings about Abaddon in this particular game. There are things that he's good against, like Potom Arrow as well as Skyrath Silence and Conch Shot, but there are things that he's actually very terrible against. Chronosphere, uh, Razor, Static Link, which doesn't get blocked at all, uh, Cogs, which you can't really do anything about too, so... Uh, I think they, there are, I think, better supports, but maybe they were pressed for time during the draft. Alright, well... Uh, we'll see. As far as the lane stage goes, work, has worked out so far. The dual lane up top has not really slowed down Mason's farm that much. And sure, he's not getting complete free farm. He's actually, I mean, it's actually the DK who's getting the most farm here. But all of, well, two of EG's core heroes and their jungle enigma all getting decent farm across the map. So while Tide's not getting farm, he has still managed to get a decent number of experience. He's sitting on level four already. So I think EG going to be very happy with the early game because their draft is all about that kind of 15 to 20 minute five man, let's death ball towers, let's stick together and make it so Fnatic can't fight us at all, which right now they're on track to reach. I would say that they should have better early game than Fnatic, but okay. Fnatic had a couple of things that um, boosted their early game a lot. Firstly, is this Observer Ward, which slows Enigma's jumbling a lot. And secondly, is just the unexpected lanes. I think they expected Razor mid as well as Clock off and roaming bottom and um, Skyrath Mage, and then instead they dump Hani down bottom, and it just makes life extremely difficult for the universe, and he can't bully the faces Void at all, because he's not even in the lane. Yeah, Void is rushing a Midas, he's only 100 gold away from that one now, and uh, we'll see him pick it up fairly soon. This is also why he's kind of struggling in this lane, like, often uh, I've seen Voids go mid, they go for like Poor Man's Shield, they go for Treads, they don't go for as greedy as, of a build as Aerith is, so while Aerith is having a slightly bigger struggle in the laning phase, he'll quickly catch him on farm once he has this Midas online, not to mention, it's decent damage output. Uh, more attack speed means more time lock procs, which means more damage output in your Chronosphere. Yeah, and even though Fnatic only seems slightly ahead early, this again, EG's all about that five man death ball taking out towers. Reaper Tice comes out on Trixie, and not enough damage. Is that the gonna come out? I don't know. Death oh, <laughs> 15 HP. That ring of health coming out. Atiz is gonna find him though. He revealed himself from Invis. Oh no. He was Invis from the Moonlight Shadow. Atiz had hasted himself up there and. With one, he revealed himself by firing that arrow and paid the price. Atizi could snap the courier instead. He's going to go towards his middle lane, and Era gets a Chronosphere up. That's not going to be enough to keep him alive if Atizi hits him. And it's a kill from the PPD where on the Abaddon being daddy. Meanwhile, under the tower, there's a lot of damage to Atizi with the lockdown. One more right click from Hani may not be enough. Not with PPD healing him up. The Mist Coil coming into play here. Atizi gets Ancient Steel, takes an Arcane Bolt, but he's still more than healthy. PPD putting in work there on the support Abaddon. Healing everyone up and allowing EG to just stay alive there in the mid lane. I mean, getting a kill on Era there was pretty huge and fantastic response from Fnatic, uh, helping out once that black hole came out from Zai. Well, it's uh, 
Slight cause for concern for Fnatic. They do have Void with those Midas up, but the Razor even rotated in from Radiant's the bottom lane there, so uh, it's still a, a Razor who is not looking all that scary or all that farm right now. He's got his Space Boots, got a Wraith Band, but often you want to be trying to get that fast mech up, and there's no yeah. real signs of any of those mech components just yet. There's a lot Razor. of slow items, I think, coming out from Fnatic. Firstly is the Midas coming out from Faces Void. He's already died once, uh, not necessarily because of it, but if he had Trez, he might have lived. We see two Bassies on the side of Fnatic 2, one on Mirana as well well as Razor, and I don't foresee them pushing towers anytime soon. And we also see this dead ring of health on Mirana, which is nice versus the Heartstopper in lane, but come five mans, and is she actually going to be able to turn that into a Lincolns anytime soon? I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, you could, even if you're rushing a Lincolns, it means you that little you can do in these early game clashes compared to having like Radiant's phase boots or drums, all these more attack. kind of cheaper cost-effective mm -hmm. items. So Lincolns is nice when you finally get it, it takes you like a good 20-ish minutes before you even come close to finishing off. Mason avoids an arrow here at the top lane. Big Daddy's trying to rotate in. Could get some cogs off here shortly. Mason though has the death pulse here. He's also got an Abaddon here to back him up. He's going to be more than okay. Big Daddy takes a Reaper's scythe here. Goes down to Mason. That's where your, your little status procs are coming to play. And Mason's going to heal up. 10 procs on that and he gets HP as well as Mana back Radiant from the kill, and even just with one point in the Sages there, now Hits Level 8 gets his second point, he still gets a decent amount of heal, and EG get another kill attack. here in the top lane. Fnatic struggling to find their footing here in the early game. After have to applause PPD though, being at the right place at the right time. They don't have awards in the yeah. area, but he was able to anticipate that gank coming and saved Mason from almost certain death. RTZ in the meantime may get this T1 tower in the mid. Era does have Chrono Sphere, he is pinging out. Oh, he wants He's got no backup though, he gets the tower tonight, which is nice. Uh, TZ, gonna be a bit upset by that one. Could have gone for a Dragon Tail, but doesn't want to overcommit when he's right by a tower, which could have TP support coming into. So, meanwhile, top lane, we'll see EG look to apply the pressure here on this tier 1. There is Skyrath in the trees, but I'm not sure if he wants to go here. There's no Void, no Chronosphere available. Hani's just gonna have to let this one go. Goes to Deny, will Radiant's not get it. Necrophos secures the gold for the tower. He's got Treads, Magic Wand, a cloak, and he is looking pretty beefy right now. You combine that with the healing potential of your Abaddon, as we've already seen. Killing this Necrophos is going to be a challenge. Yes, they have to catch him in a Chronosphere, or perhaps just expend Ancient Seal on him and not worry about the damage application and just ignore him, similar to how like Storms with Orchids play. But at the same time, they also need to save a spell for Enigma, and that's what Clockwork comes in for, but he's only level 4. So he did secure first one for his team, but suffering in terms of levels, and he's just not as tanky as a normal yeah. offlane Clockwork. And uh, with all this, this, the kills EG have been getting and creating pressure, or applying pressure elsewhere on the map, they get the T1 mid, the T1 top. During all this, Universe gets space. He's managed to farm himself up Arcane Boots. He's hit level 6, has 9 or a gold. Farming up probably a Blink Dagger for his team for the initiation is a, a reality. He could theoretically have this before the 15 minute mark, especially if EG are going to start getting some more towers, which they definitely have the potential to do. DK's got his ultimate back up. You team up with the Necrophos, who's looking like he's going to offer a lot of healing for the team. Actually goes for a drums recipe, so has a completed drums. This I is... like the HP build on him. He doesn't yeah. need the mech because Enigma are, is already getting it, and he just needs to survive the burst. The burst is going to be swift, and it's going to be a lot of damage from Clockwork, from Skywrath, from Faces Void. Things that he can't really avoid except just having straight large amounts of HP and mitigation through armor or magic resist. Who doesn't need movement speed as well? <laughs> You're talking about Skyrath movement speed? I mean, a Necrophos going for drums, not the most... Like, con I mean, I, I wouldn't even say it's that unconventional, but drums is just good on absolutely everyone, especially a, a core hero who can get it around 10 minutes into the game, so... Often Necrophos, a lot of utility in a team fight, and EG is just going to be going at Fnatic, going at their towers with mech, with drums, with big ultimates, and a DK in ulti form with a, probably a fast BKB. He's already picked up a Mithril Hammer RTZ, and... He's going to be a big force to be reckoned with in these fights. What's really hurting Fnatic right now is them not having levels on their supports. Chronosphere is up, but they don't have the damage to dump into it right now. And they can't combo Clockwork Ultimate and Skywrath Ultimate because neither of them are level 6. Level 4 only on Skywrath Mage and level 5 on Clockwork, whereas we see Enigma, even with his camp block, level 8.5 with a completed mech and Sol Arrow throws a Chronosphere, but Ati is in range for a stun. He stuns Arrow inside the Chronosphere, takes the arrow as well, keeps his buddy Mason alive. Mason can now heal him back up. You've also got PPD there with the shield. Abaddon not only good against the Skyrath Silence, but also great at dealing with 5 second arrows. The instant shield basically means you can negate this. Now Trixie going to get stunned up by the Dragon Tail. There's your Reaper side, brought down by Mason. And with that, EG more or less secure the bottom tier 1 tower. Enigma actually picked it up in the meanwhile. Zai now, not just mech, he's got another 700 gold on top of that. And EG 
I don't think they're done pushing. I think they're going to go for this tier 2 bottom. There's no reason that they shouldn't. The itemization from Fnatic is really, really poor at dealing with a 5-man. And looking at EG's draft, you know that they're going to 5-man early. They have the heroes to do so, and they do it so many times on Dire. And three towers Radiant's down already. Tower four about to happen. Attack. They can't defend without Chronosphere. 70 seconds in. To be honest, they can push high ground very early. They need a mech on Razor instead of the Aquila and Overclub. Yeah. That's almost already a mech. And they also don't... Radiant's they need more items to fight right now. They can't just keep giving up towers because later game, yeah, they might have better late game in theory, but the way it's working out right now, EG just going to snowball off this massive, massive tower advantage. I, I'm really surprised, especially by the no mech on Razor. I think like Void going for a mine is not the best for early fighting, but it's still a decent, like, you want to try and get to the late game through the Void, but Razor not going for a mech definitely does not have enough. Meanwhile, mid lane, there's been a hook shot in, they've gone in on Arteezy, and Arteezy locked down Silence as well, went for a Maelstrom, not the BKB with the Mithril Hammer, and will be focused down in the mid lane, so... Uh, no Maelstrom, or no BKB, that's actually yeah. fairly surprising. I don't He's... necessarily think they lack damage, I think they just need to, they just need to sustain versus Fnatic's ultimates. Maelstrom's an interesting one. I guess if they could, if he can finish off the fast Mjolnir, like pushing with Mjolnir suddenly is really annoying because you Mjolnir someone like the Necrophos happen on the front lines and he's doing a huge amount of damage output with those Mjolnir procs, but you got to get to that Mjolnir, which I, I guess EG are thinking they will do so before they try and push. And he just gets like Chrono Skyrathal that he's going to die without BKB. Yeah. Well... Oh. PPD will run into error here in the bottom river, but should be okay here. PPD already level 7. They have another Aquila. They have two Aquilas, one on Razor, one on the Faceless Void, and then they have a Bassi on... Oh, they have Aquila on Marana too! Why do they Triple have three Aquilas? Triple Aquilas, Fnatic are all about. Aquila is a great item, and Ring of Basilius is a great item, but having three of them is just a lot of gold spent. Gold that they needed elsewhere. Yeah. If you're ahead, it's okay-ish because, like, it, as, an, as a standalone item, it gives good damage, good stats. But if you're split pushing, it's great yeah. too. But they haven't come close to being able to take down any of the T ones. Well, EG, they finished the blink dagger on their tide hunter. Now going to finish off Rochan as well. In the meantime, rocket play will scout them out, but it's too too late. Leave the uh, ages for Artizi. Yep, and uh, he'll take that, pick that one up, and he's good to go. So, drops his bottle and. We'll see Fnatic trying to apply some pressure here in the top lane, but they're entirely spotted out. There's an EG Observer here that even scouts out the two Fnatic heroes who think they're in fog. Error as well as Fly are staying back, gonna make their way into the trees where they oh, think they have not been the spotted. Uh, EG can just bait this. They know exactly where Error and Fly are. Dyer's also, they'll see the uh, Clockwork make attack. his way towards top lane. EG see everything. If they take this fight, it's because they want to. They've also finished a full stuff on Necropos. This is not gonna end well for Fnatic if they're not careful. And they're gonna bait out Mason, it looks like he does have a force staff completed. Oh, the blink ravage actually tricks him, lead dodge, and they can try and focus on Eric. Can they bring him down? Yes, sir, they can. Arteezy cops the Mystic Flare, not gonna take enough damage from it though. Flies in this up with a Moonlight Shadow, I don't think they've actually got detection. Sentry Ward comes too late, Universe still chasing, but not gonna find anyone, and... <laughs> One kill on Void there with the blink ravage, still... It wasn't quite, it wasn't like a, a nut, I mean, I mean, it's enough for EG, they're so far ahead it doesn't matter, but I feel like they could have almost gotten more off of it. If they, they could pick up a jump, but they're actually a little bit... Uh, yeah, Universe has the money for it now, maybe, maybe he could buy it on the tide, but we'll see. They still keep killing the Void too, he did have a very fast Midas because of his first one, but dying two times since and losing two T2s and three T1s, not how Fnatic expected this game to be. Big Daddy, this is ambitious, you've gone in on an Abaddon who has 1100 HP, pops his ultimate early, so he stays fully healed up and now backup is on the way, Universe gets silenced up, Trixie wants PPD, without the forward time he's very vulnerable here, shields himself, should be okay for now and it's Universe on the tight taking heavy damage, the mech comes in to heal him up, he also gets a missed call as well, pushed back by the Cogs now, he'll be okay, and the Cogs are kind of zoning in uh, Fnatic's own team out, Flyg left alone, gets an arrow to Zai, and Zai, he doesn't have to miss the, the shield available, it's on cooldown for now, and he'll actually take a fall, so one kill going away Fnatic, shield being on cooldown, Arteezy gets four star forward, gets the kill on the Skyrath mate, so a one for one trade to start things off, and... ...kills on EG's lineup is just so tricky, with all these heals, with the Aphotic shields, and everything just to keep these EG heroes alive. Universe played that um, very, very well, expertly. Um, he like bounced in and out, and he had confidence in his teammates. He would have died without the mech. He would have died without the shield and the heal yeah. from PPD. But knowing that he can push his limits and overall mitigate Fnatic's damage output by blinking in and gushing.
That oh, six second cooldown on the shield was almost enough to keep everyone alive, but right at the end there, Nygma unfortunately got slightly let down. It was like half a second away from being up to get rid of the silence and maybe saving his life, but end of the day, EG lose an Enigma. They're still applying pressure. They get the tower down. They do some dewarding. They've got complete map control, more or less. Fnatic just have the singular defensive observer ward up on their big cliff, and apart from that, EG are just kind of in cruise control mode right now. They can just go from objective to objective and uh, just keep Fnatic kind of starved and seeing on their side of the map. All Fnatic can really try and do, I feel, is go for some kind of split pushing when EG run at them as far as... Oh, but it makes it immediately get shielded and forced up out. He takes no damage. How do you kill this guy? He has 1464 HP with 8 armor with Bassi and a cloak too. So yes, he is extremely difficult to kill. And usually you'll just see people blown up by this, but maybe this is the counter. The Faceless Void plus Skyrath. I think the Abaddon pick against the Skyrath, well, Skyrath and Mirana. And as mentioned during the draft, the whole they're going to blink Ravage just for a solo kill on Trixie. Even the Reaper's side, why not? EG's draft all about going from tower to tower. Getting us even just a single kill helps get you those towers. Yeah, and now they have pretty much two targets they can't kill. They can't kill Arteezy because he has Aegis. They can't kill Necrophos. Oh, actually, they can't kill Abaddon either. So it's three targets are pretty much just invulnerable. If you focus one of these tanky heroes like Mason or Arteezy and they've got Mjolnir on them, prepare for some pain. Zaiji will take this tower with ease. A bit low on here. Universal will juice him back up with the attack. Arcane Boots and Well, with that, all I can try and do is go for some slip push here. Eris up top here, but with TP from Zai, he should be repelled from going for this T1 tower. Not a single tower claimed by Fnatic at 18 minutes into this game. And examining EG's play, they're very, very efficient. After they got the kill on Mirana, they four man down mid, and Zai was just farming on the side in the meantime, a couple of screams away, but he knows that Fnatic isn't going to defend, and rather than taking the chance that they'll actually fight, he knows that he can squeak out a little bit more efficiency, and looking at the gold graph, 14,000 lead for EG. Here we go, Rod of Atos picked up by Mason, like this a lot of pick up, I mean you get the survivability of the casual vitality booster, uh, on top of that you've just, you're just getting tankier and tankier, now add that, add into that the slow which can be used and spammed out, so Fnatic are going to be put under a lot of pressure because of this item. Yeah, <laughs> his HP is just out of control, 1564 HP on a Necrophos, oh. less than 20 minutes in, that is almost unheard of. The scary thing is he's got a mech from the Enigma backing him up and an Abaddon who is always sitting right behind him. If he gets Ancient Sealed, a Photic Shield comes out, if he gets Arid, a Photic Shield is there, Mist Coils are there. He... Not, not to mention Blink Ravage, Black Hole, and Anchor Smash. I mean, he take his 1500 HP and effectively double it with all these heals, with the Flame Walker's Cloak, with all this extra survivability, it's, it's much more than a 1500 HP Necrophos. Oh, EG might think they're safe with the Berserver Ward, but they're smoked up behind Trixie, and they know that he's not going to go in here alone, he's and Zai is shadow. actually perhaps baiting them out. 29 seconds on this age as well. Uh, TZ has to be a little bit careful. If they take a fight right now and his age just expires, could kind of end in disaster here. They get an Observer Ward planted, and... If Trixie were in that uh, were in that smoke, then I think they would have actually taken a good fight there, but not sure exactly why he wasn't with his team there, and he gave the jig up by Moonlight Shadowing under the guise of the Observer Ward. Well, we'll see Aegis now be reclaimed by Roshan, and EG probably ready to go to the, for their next objective here, though there aren't any outer towers left, so they've lost, a lost Aegis and there's no tier 2s left, all that's left is really to go high ground. So maybe they consider waiting for the next Roshan, they can farm out these lanes, get their next couple core items up. Universe is at bottom, he's got 4 stuff and Blink. I think to kind of just help deal with like, what it, I mean, 4 stuff against the Skyrath Mage, you can avoid the, avoid the Mystic Flare. Uh, not to mention, it's good against Clockwork, it's just great in general at getting away, even from something as simple as a Razor Static Link, so... A lot of Fnatic's just ability to teamfight is countered by these multiple 4 stuffs EG have picked up. And Fnatic's just struggling for kills. Their kill, their lineup's all about trying to get early kills and just in incrementally wear the opponent down with Chronosphere and comboing that with Ultimus, but EG has given them very little quarter and he talked about how it would be difficult for Arteezy to get Mjolnir, near, but with Roshan and Six Towers, he has a plate mail on top of that. And uh, EG, they've now got their BKB for Zai on the Enigma, so pushing high ground is a definite reality coming soon. Roshan has not respawned just yet, so it's still a bit of a time left for that. Arteezy will be farming at the mid lane. I think EG may as well wait for Roshan. It's not like Fnatic's going to be picking up any game-turning items in the meantime. If Fnatic, uh, if EG can find some kills here or there, great, they'll take them. Maybe consider going high ground if they have a numbers advantage, but 
until they grab another Aegis, until maybe our TZ even finishes his like Assault Crest or whatever it may be. EG are in no rush. Their late game is fantastic as well. Like, I don't feel like Fnatic even have a huge comeback potential in the late game scenario. And that is a BKB on Enigma. There are two spells that can interrupt his black hole BKB, but still, it just makes things that much more difficult. And if all of EG gets BKBs, Fnatic won't be able to defend high ground. Yeah. Well, Fnatic at least have the singular BKB of their own on the Razor. Or maybe see Faceless Void go for one as well, but for now, he is going for that Maelstrom. So get a bit more damage up. We can actually, yeah, he's a 40 and 40 gold. So he'll drop maybe his Quelling Blade, maybe his Magic Stick and uh, make his way towards that. But as things stand right now, Fnatic can't really find too many kills and EG. Like they're just going to stick together when they need to. Or if someone's off farming alone, maybe the DK, maybe the Necrophos, if they're alone, it's PPD's nearby enough that he can be there in time to help heal him up, keep him alive. Because both DK and Necrophos take quite a long time to actually bring down and. We'll see EG make their way into the enemy jungle here. Multiple heroes coming on through here. Mason leading the charge. He's now got another 2,000 gold on top of this Rod of Atos, so plenty of options available for uh, the EG carry player. Yeah, and they have such good uh, stuns to combo into the Reaper Scythe too. The DK stun as well as the Tidehunter Ravage is almost... Each, either of them significant enough yeah. to just kill someone immediately from full HP. Dyer's top tower it's just, is under it's just so right. I mean, he, he's using the Reaper's Scythe so liberally as well. Like, they don't mind blowing multiple ultimates just to kill one hero. They've been Tide Ravaging one hero, they've been Reapering, Reapering one hero, and we'll see Fnatic now pop the Moonlight Show in the mid lane. I think they're using it somewhat defensively. Mason throws an Atos on Honey, but that slows himself more Dyer's than it slows Honey because of that Razor passive. And well, we'll see EG be somewhat repelled here from the middle, middle lane, although actually they're going to make the charge down towards it. Fnatic. Gonna have to just defend the high ground. It looks like EG not too intent on going high ground just yet. They'll back off. Arteezy will TP top to keep on farming and I guess Fnatic achieve what they kind of hope to, which is to, to repel the EG push by just pushing other lanes. But at the same time, it's buying EG time to do Roshian to just wait for that to make their high ground push. And Arteezy is closing in on his AC relatively soon. All right, well, we'll see. What comes next? Once Arteezy gets the AC, they'll probably be heading towards that Roshan pit. And Fnatic's options then, it just comes down to defending. Defending against an Aegis push from EG, against an Assault Crest as well with the DK. Everyone on this EG lineup is just getting more and more farmed. It's not just the core heroes. You've got farm supports. Your Enigma has a BKB, has a mech, has a plate mail now on top of that. PPD is not the most farmed hero in the game, but... By all means, what he offers in a team fight doesn't come down to items. It's all about that aphotic shield. You hit a five second arrow, it's one of those things which can theoretically turn around a late game team fight, but shield can cancels it. Same for the Ancient Seal from the Skyrath Mage. So many of Fnatic's big kind of spells and team fights are just countered by this Abaddon. And who do they really focus? Let's say, in theory, they do get a five man chrono. Enigma has BKB as well as Plate Mail. DK has. Um, a ton of armor with Dragon's Blood as well as the Plate Mail and the Chain Mail. Tidehunter has Kraken Shell, Necrophos just went straight tank items, and Abaddon has his ultimate. So there is no good target for Fnatic to focus down. Well, now one of those targets is also going to have an Aegis, so they probably weren't thinking about focusing our TZ in a Chrono Sphere with his 35 armor regardless, but now he's got an Aegis on top. They may try and find a pickoff here in the top lane. They've got great vision up in the enemy jungle, so they know how many heroes here they've got. Got the AT, he immediately pops the ultimate. Mjolnir on himself as well as doing huge damage. Big Daddy maybe gonna go down here. He barely survives. Going for the TP out. Will survive just barely. They force out the Aegis there. So for Fnatic, it's still a small victory. They use a couple ultimates, they kill off the Aegis. So it means when EG come to push, there at least won't be an Aegis on Arteezy's Dragonite. They just need to take small fights like that, and eventually they can try and get back in the game, but as it stands, it's been 15,000 gold lead for EG for the past seven minutes. So Fnatic has been doing a good job ever since the towers have stopped falling, but at the same time, they are going to have to deal with five-man high ground push, and they still need a mech? Dyer's oh, I know what has gone up. At this Dyer's point, I think it's like, you go, you go this long, it's like, why? Maybe a support here buys one, but... I guess they just committed to not having a mech this game. Aero smoked up in mid with Moonlight Shadow. Ooh. PPD's on the front line though. This guy's got his ultimate. He's going to borrow time out of it. Universe blinks into the Chronosphere. So they see this Ravage coming. Silence on Universe needs a shield. 
PPD pops up for a time, does not shield himself. Universe still silence up, has a ravage after a force up. Hani wants to go in with his BKB being used, but not much will come from it. EG now looking to re-engage. Universe got blink ravage back up, as does your Enigma have black hole. Does not have a blink dagger to engage, but the BKB alone. With Chronosphere on cooldown, the only thing that's left to cancel a BKB black hole is that clockwork hookshot. Arrow will find Universe, but immediate Aphotic Shield comes out from PPD, and with that, he should be just fine to uh, continue on, on. on. On top of that, Hani uses 10 second BKB, and that has the longest yeah. cooldown too, so they have 50 seconds where they can push without Chrono or without the BKB on the Razor, so Ravage is going to be absolutely devastating. Fnatic going to just keep throwing these arrows, but guess what? DPD are going to keep shielding them off, and now EG ready to go into the high ground. He's in the front lines, has his ultimate available. Also level 16, so this is the big bad Frost Dragon. Fortunately, you don't get the corrosive damage onto the towers, but hey, with the Assault Crest minus 5 armor, he's doing a lot of right-click damage here, and he'll throw out a stun to get things started here, and that's going to be a dead Trixie with the Reaper's side. Nothing you can do about that Do about that one. Now, TZ on the front lines is going to keep on tanking things up, even without the Aegis. With PPD seeing behind him with the Aphotic Shield with the Mist Coil, he's more than tanky enough to find this. This is just something that Fnatic just unable to defend this. You try and Radiance fight into this, it's just not really possible. They're attack. ready to try and go with Arrow, but he hasn't got Chronosphere for another 8 seconds. They hook in just to try and buy some time. They've already lost the melee racks. Oh, Universe is there. Hits the three man Ravage. Actually, Hani getting off the BKB. He's trying to buy this one. Taking a lot of damage. Plus 168 from the static link, but it's not even going to allow him to fight this. Artiz is still marching forward. Has the backup of the heals. PPD, as well as Mesa, both him up. Four man Chrono. Universe can't do anything about it. Already used the Ravage. Artiz goes down to start things off. DK, as well as Enigma. Both dead. No black hole for this fight. And each being repelled back for now, but here comes your buyback, and that's from Fnatic. Clockwork gonna come back in the fight. EG on the run. They've lost the Dragonet, lost the Enigma, they don't want to fight any further. Big Daddy does not have Hulk Shot though. Trixie needs to hit an arrow if they want to try and get another pick off. Leaps forward. Maybe gonna throw an arrow. Is gonna Dyer's hope to find someone, anyone. No. Nope. EG see it coming. They sidestep it, and they're gonna be A OK -okay at least until Hook Shot comes back up, but that's another 20 seconds away, and I think Fnatic. Can't really chase too much further. PPD going to run in and <laughs> quickly realize, oh wait, Fnatic is still chasing. This is not a fight we maybe want to take. Big Daddy gets the Lincoln Sphere on himself. Gets it procced by the Mist Coil though, and EG are going to go back in. They blink in with the Tide, hit the gush. Big Daddy's dead. That, there goes your Clockwork, who just bought back as well. Fly going to get caught up by the Aethos. Is there anything to cancel this? You betcha. Reaper's side. Fly goes down. Two for more Fnatic heroes. Hit the deck, and EG find themselves once again on top as Fnatic struggle to defend their base. The stars are just not aligning for Fnatic. They didn't have Chronos here for that entire fight, and when it came up, Era just immediately took a spill. He doesn't have his BKB yet. Uh, they also had a rate for Razor's BKB to come off cooldown too, and EG just struck when they knew Fnatic were at their weakest. And that was without the Aegis too. I, I don't really see Fnatic coming back from this. It's, you've, already, you've lost one Rex now. That was EG pushing without the Aegis. And that was not a great Ravage from Universe. No. He ravaged a solo Clockwork and a BKB Razor. So, in actuality, it was pretty much just one hero. The Chronos here was, was fantastic, although by then the fight was... Well, the Rax was already lost by the time the Chronos here came out. And the EG realized, hey, we can just brute force these Raxes. Have our TZ in the front lines and have him focus things down. Eric goes in with the Chronos here. Wants our TZ, but he's, got, he's just so goddamn tanky that he was going to... Keep him juiced up. Arteezy still alive. He gets forced out of there. The clockwork hook shots in, trying to look for him, but they have your black hole from side. Locks down the razor, breaks him down. Fnatic still trying to bring down Arteezy, but he's just too goddamn ticky with the shield, with the miss calls as well. Trixie now going to be brought down to the back lines as well. That's a kill for Universe on the tide. Three, make it four here is dead. Razor going to buy back as well, try and keep the, keep the dream alive for Fnatic, but right now it looks like EG going to one up Fnatic here in their fourth match, and there's just nothing left in the tank for Fnatic Ben. This is a very well thought out draft by EG, and I mean, one of the main reasons why people just have to ban out Enigma very early on. EG gonna go to 3 and 1. Fnatic, meanwhile, pick up their second loss in the TI4 group stages. And EG, they had a rocky start with that loss to Cloud9, but at the end of the day, they're now 3 and 1. Going with one the more today and less. Yeah, we're kind of brainstorming at lunch today, like which heroes have we not seen, who's not been picked, and Necrofoss one of them. I don't think we've seen Abaddon yet, but EG. Mixing up their picks, opening up a, a new can of worms, and Fnatic just not ready to deal with it. Skywrath looked semi-vulnerable in terms of this game. The hottest pick of this tournament. Yeah, well, uh, we're going to...